This is One on One. Welcome to the uh, Tisch WNET studios right here in the heart of uh, New York in Lincoln Center. It's my honor, my pleasure to welcome Dr. Paul Bloom, the author of a compelling book. It is called Just Babies, The Origins of Good and Evil. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Eric. The premise of this book is fascinating. And the research that you and your colleagues have done uh, was featured on 60 Minutes. It was. And it basically argues that um, babies, people, babies are born the way they are, and we can do everything that uh, we want to do nurturing them in a certain way, and it does matter to a large extent, but some of good and evil is determined otherwise, no? Yes, I argue that uh, there's a lot of evidence suggesting that we're born with a sense of right and wrong. We're born with some degree of compassion and empathy, with some sense of, of fairness and justice. There's some genetic differences, but there's also some things which all normal humans share. And there's a sort of a fundamental core of morality that we all possess. And so what's interesting is that the research that you did, the methodology, which was actually played out and we saw 60 Minutes, I, when I watched that, it was very small children, uh, three months. We tested kids as young as three months. Watching puppet shows. And in those right. puppet shows, these morality plays, if you will, played out, such That's as? Right. That's right. So you might have a show where there's a, a character trying to get up the hill. Another character gently pushes it up, and a third character shoves it down. Then you offer the characters to the baby, the, the good guy and the bad guy. And then what we find is, for even young babies, they'll tend to prefer the good guy. They'll reach for the good guy. They'll look longer at the good guy. And then when they get a little bit older, they'll reward the good guy, and they'll punish the bad guy. By, they'll punish them by taking away stuff. And when they see other characters be cruel to the bad guy, they like the other characters more. Mm. So, you know, these are ways we're trying to understand. We can't ask them, if I want to know your morality, I would ask you or watch you. Can't do that for a baby. But you could study their reactions to right and wrong, and you could learn a lot from that. And so, I mean, it's so interesting to me. I was saying to you before we get on the air that our, our two um, younger sons um, are here, happen to be here in the studio. Um, and one is nine and one is 11, and they couldn't be more different. And you think you raise them, you treat them the same way, which may or may not be true, but you think yeah. you do. And they have very different personalities. Genetics? So a lot of my research is interested in what we all share, but then there's, there's how we're different. And, and I think it's, 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 to some extent, what common sense will tell you, that it's a bit of both. So a lot of how we are raised is, is influenced by our environment, and particularly how parents, uh, uh, adjust, respond to a kid and treat a kid will affect the kid's morality. The, a, a kid growing up now is going to be very different from a kid growing up 100 years ago. But then there also is genetics. Uh, a lot of the temperament that's relevant to morality, such as how aggressive you are, right. how empathetic you are, is to some extent the genetic toss of a dice. The genetic toss of a dice? Yeah. Yeah, but, but, but doctor, can't you at some point, okay, this, this baby acts or responds in a certain way to these experiments, but then there are five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Doesn't then the parent have the ability to, sh to do something or a series of things in shaping and molding that child in a way that can undo some of that? Yes. I mean, so what we find in, in babies is a universal core, but it's very limited. Uh, the initial moral responses you see in a human are limited to, to people close to them, their siblings, their, their parents, their people around them. But you and I have a larger morality, which could include people we don't know, include strangers, include people in other countries. Mm. To the extent the morality goes from being narrow and tight to expand has a lot to do with how you're raised. It has a lot to do with the amount of contact you have with other right. people, the stories you're told. So, so the thing is, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine that I'm not a product of what I saw from my parents, what I did see, what I didn't see, how I saw things play out, not just what my parents said about right and wrong, yeah. but what I actually saw them do. Now, I don't, I, what I would, it's so interesting because I would imagine there are some parents watching this who say, so it's the role of the genetic dice. So what make, what difference does it make what kind of parent I really am or how hard I work trying to teach a kid right from wrong if it's a roll of the dice? And that's not the message of the book. It's not at all. So take an analogy. Um, it's partially the, the genetic chance, your musculature, how big and strong you're going right. to get. But you'd have to be crazy to say, fine, when it, matter, when it comes to, to training an athlete, forget about training. It's all genetically determined. That's ridiculous. Um, how much you exercise, how much you work out, what's on a training regime will determine how strong, how fast you are. It's the same thing with morality. 
To some extent, people have different calibration. They start off in different ways. But their experience could cause them either to, in some cases, become kind of monstrous, or in other cases, become terrific people. The myths that you're trying to take on, tackle, do away with in the book include? Oh, a lot of them. Uh, one is that we're born blank slates. We're born empty heads. You don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. That there's so much evidence now from developmental psychology, from evolutionary theory, from studies of other creatures, that we are, are, are born with a fundamental moral sense. Just in the same way we're actually born with an understanding of the physical world, an understanding of the social world. Um, one of the, I think, most surprising findings of contemporary psychology is how much of knowledge is pre-wired into the brain. So that's one myth. Another myth is that morality is fundamentally an a, a matter of emotions and gut feelings and, 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 and disgust and anger. And to a large extent it is. But to a large extent, reason, rational deliberation, argument, discussion, what we're doing now, plays a powerful role in the morality that we have. Uh, give me a little more on that, well, for instance. Well, consider moral progress. So, um, so hundreds of years ago, people like us would assume, would naturally believe that slavery was right, slavery was moral. I, when I was born, uh, about 90% of Americans thought interracial marriage was morally wrong. We've gotten better in certain ways. And then the question is, how did we get better? And one way we got better is we've made arguments, we've taken other people's perspectives, and so on. It's not entirely dissimilar from science, where our science has also gotten better. So same-sex marriage, you could look at it in a comparable fashion. If you looked at studies from early 1980s, 85, then to 90, then, then you look at today, the numbers are different, and people would often say that it was their morality, or their sense of morality, or what they perceived to be right and wrong, that caused them to say that they thought same-sex marriage was wrong, and now the numbers are very different. The, the analogy between attitudes towards same-sex marriage and attitudes towards interracial marriage, I think, is a strong one. You're getting the same trends, and for similar reasons. So attitudes about interracial interactions change a lot because of the media, the Cosby Show, and so right. on. Just like attitudes about gay marriage are changing due to shows like Will and Grace and Modern Family. Familiarity, conversation. Right, so people may not have a gay friend or a black friend, but if they watch TV, they have people who strike them very much as a gay friend or a black friend, and that could have a difference. That could make it. This is fascinating stuff. Fascinating stuff. Uh, Just Babies, they are not blank slates. They are not. The book is called Just Babies, The Origins of Good and Evil. Dr. Paul Bloom, um, I want to thank you and your colleagues for doing important research and sharing it with us here on public television. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Uh, we are here at the Tish WNET studios. We'll be back with One on One right after this. Thank you, Doctor. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Barnabas Health, Berkeley College, the law firm of Gibbons PC, United Water, Wells Fargo. Verizon Communications, and by New Jersey Natural Gas. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by the Adler Aphasia Center.